Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 542, The Roadblocks to Fat Loss, Specifically, Losing Weight After 40. BioBalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating the symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin and Brett Newcomb are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, a book that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. Today we're going to talk about weight loss after you turn 40. And this is a favorite subject of mine because most of my patients are 40 and over. Um, I take care of people by trying to reverse aging, trying to um, help them get their hormones back. We, we go over diet, exercise programs, supplements to their nutrition, uh, behavioral changes trying to get them to be healthy again. So most of my patients um, are past childbearing and they are taking care of their children, they're taking care of their parents, they're busy in in the uh, prime of their careers and they're really busy people and they wanna know the fastest, easiest way to lose fat. So um, it's not just weight, so let me specify this. If you lose, if you starve yourself, say, if you have the self-control to starve yourself, which isn't a good w- a diet plan, by the way, um, you'll lose most of, mostly muscle and some fat, and then you'll gain, you'll gain fat back when you go off the diet, and then you will have lost muscle. And, and after 40, you're not going to regain that muscle even with exercise. It, act, it happens to some people at 40 and some people at 50, but I'll just say 40, uh, just so I can make it easier. But when you start uh, losing your testosterone, which is age 40, you start to age, and then your growth hormone drops, and you can't make as much muscle without it. And then thyroids, in most women, thyroids start um, misbehaving, and most women need to take iodine to stimulate their thyroid production, or they need to have their thyroid replaced, especially in the Midwest where uh, iodine is is not in our food or water, and we don't have an ocean. So basically, we have to supplement iodine to help keeping keep our thyroid um, actually healthy. So these things are happening at 40, and we're all very busy. And and uh, I went through this a long time ago, but but my current patients are all going through all of these very extensive, time consuming. Um, uh, jobs. They, they they have multiple jobs. Their parents, their children. They're taking care of a, a, aging uh, parents, and they're working or they're taking care of their home and carting their children around. So, so this has to be something um, that is different than what they did when they were younger. And I I have to think really hard to remember how I diet dieted when I was younger. And 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 I hear this from patients saying, I did what I did when I was 20, and it doesn't work anymore. And that's true. It doesn't work because your body's completely different. You actually could pay attention to what you were eating then. You didn't have all of these responsibilities, although we all thought we did. Uh, but, But it gets worse as we get older and take care of more people. So, so what you did before, whether you starved yourself, you know, to get into a dress, or you ate only, I mean, I remember a diet I was on, it was Fresca, eggs, and salad for a whole summer. Yeah, and I dropped all my weight, and I looked kind of emaciated. I, th- I think I lost all my muscle mass, too, because I wasn't very strong after that. But that, if I did that now, that wouldn't happen. I would, I would still lose muscle mass. I'd probably lose a lot of muscle mass, and I would have be what we call skinny fat. So that's the downside of not eating or eating minimally to lose weight. We lose our muscle, we gain fat back where the muscle used to be, and we end up not having a lot of muscle to burn calories. So we're cold all the time, and we aren't strong, and we get really worn out when we work out. 
So that's the downside of being skinny fat. Yeah, it may look good for a while. It's not gonna look good forever because fat usually sags where muscle doesn't do that. So uh, other people come in and say, well, I did the low fat diet and it worked when I was 20, but it doesn't work now. And, and low fat diets in general aren't really a good idea because fat fills you up. And those are diets that you're hungry on all the time. So that's not necessarily a good way to lose weight after 40. Um, another eating plan is a low carb diet, which is what I recommend to people over 40 because after menopause, women become insulin resistant just naturally. That's just part of menopause. Even if we give them estrogen back and testosterone back, it's easier to lose weight, but they still have an element of insulin resistance. So eating carbs, makes them gain fat a lot faster than they did when they were younger. It's just a, you're in a different body. You have to then adapt to the different body. And we're always being accosted by um, commercials or social media. This one diet pill will take care of everything. It doesn't, and by the way, don't waste your money. That just doesn't work. To diet and to, to lose weight, you have to plan on changing your lifestyle and changing how you eat forever, not just for the next six months, not just for a short period of time, but you, you should develop an eating plan that actually works for you, that you can continue, and that is healthy, that has every food group, very few, um, very few grains because grains are all carb and and even though the government told us we were supposed to eat grains because america makes grain and grows grain that was that was a monetary decision not a health decision and it's left us all with a very high rate of diabetes because we ate that way that is not ideal we should be eating high protein and animal protein isn't the isn't the bad guy we were made to be omnivores we were made to eat fruit vegetables and um and meat uh, also milk products and eggs if we d weren't made for that then we on i was told by my coo joe that he, he was he lived in a dairy farm or his parents were dairy farmers we would all have just molars in our teeth because we have the teeth of what we're supposed to eat we're supposed to eat everything. So we have canines, we have incisors, that's for meat. And then we ha also have molars and that's for vegetables and fruit. So our teeth kind of tell the story of what we were meant to eat, just for all of you people who don't think we're supposed to have proteins like that. Most of my patients who don't eat meat, proteins, eggs, fish, or um, milk, milk products are very, they're thin, but they have very little muscle. They're not very strong and, and it's not very good for their muscles or their brain either. So I don't advise that type of diet, but uh, an omnivore diet that is heavy on proteins, much heavier than the government says we should eat, um, is, is what I recommend. And that will keep you full and it will also keep you from uh, getting up in the middle of the night and eating because you didn't eat enough during the day or eating a lot at the end of the day, which is also not necessarily a great idea. Recently, intermittent fasting has come in uh, to the fore and it works for many people, but it doesn't work for everyone. If you get hypoglycemic and you get headaches and you get weak and tired if you don't eat, then it's probably not the diet for you. That, if, if that's usually somebody who has insulin insensitivity and or insulin resistance and they need to be fed, those people need to be fed often, but no carbs while they're being fed. It should You should always have uh, a protein snack. It can be nuts, it can be eggs, it can be cheese. Uh, it can be vegetables with that or fruit with that, but um, but we don't want you, patient, patient, my patients to eat carbohydrates, especially simple carbohydrates like bread or cookies, God forbid, cake, on a regular basis because that makes them have worse insulin resistance and it makes it harder for them to lose weight. So in general, aging changes us. In general, it requires that we work harder at exercising, that we work harder at controlling our foods, eating fresher foods. I mean, if you, if you just took care of yourself, like you, I hope you take care of your car, you put in the right type of fuel in your car or it won't run. If you put in the wrong type of fuel, you've damaged the engine and damaged your car and it won't run. 
you're doing the same thing with your body. The more you eat soda, God forbid soda, uh, soda or anything with corn syrup in it, that's putting the wrong fuel into your body. Anytime you're having carbohydrates, cookies, candies, cakes, that's really not what we were meant to eat. That should be a treat and it should be something that we don't eat every day. And when we do eat it, we may pay the price of gaining a pound. It just is, you gain more weight from carbs when you're over 40 than you do from other foods. So if you think about it, eating fresh foods, eating eggs, cheese, milk, uh, meat, and vegetables are all good for your body. They're also low carbohydrate, they're low calorie, and they fill you up. They're also good for your intestines. A lot of people who don't eat those things, don't, I mean, don't eat a varied diet, their intestines don't work very well. And I suggest probiotics to everybody who is trying to get to ideal weight, no matter how small their weight loss that they need, because probiotics are necessary in your gut for you to actually make your neurotransmitters to make you happy, make dopamine, uh, make serotonin to keep you from being depressed. It also makes a lot of other chemicals in your body that are necessary. Those bacteria in your gut are important. They make all those things for us. And they keep us from having constipation, diarrhea, IBS. So probiotics are probably necessary for everybody. And that's, I would suggest that if you don't have a varied diet for some reason, then you may need prebiotics, which feeds the bacteria. So you have to take something with your probiotic to make the bacteria grow and have lots of different kinds of bacteria in your intestine to help burn calories and metabolize your food so you can get the, the uh, nutrition out of it. Otherwise, it just passes through. Those are, those are some of the tricks after 40 that we should all do. I, also, I always hear about bowel issues after 40 that I didn't used to hear as a gynecologist with a younger group of, of patients. So this is something that I think is vital to being the ideal weight, also having enough energy to get through your day. That's why I prefer putting people on small feedings all day long than, than fasting, just because oftentimes fasting causes patients, some patients, to be tired. Other patients, when they're fasting, they get ketones and they feel healthy and they feel energized. That's more often my younger patients. It isn't as, um, as effective in my older patients. So having a low carbohydrate, low grain, low sugar diet, and let me add exercise, because you can't just eat right and not exercise. And exercising daily, and maybe take a day off um, one day a week, but exercising daily is important for getting your brain to have enough energy to get you through the day, helping burn your calories, helping make muscle. All of those things are going to get you to ideal weight, but you can't do one or the other. You have to have the proper nutrition. You have to cut out things that are not good for you. And you have to exercise. It is not one or the other, and it's not a pill. I mean, sometimes we use pills to actually add to some the program that somebody has. That's called medical weight loss. And we do that quite often, but our patients have to also be doing their part, which is the proper exercise and, and, and the proper diet. One of the things I ask my, my patients to do is to figure out their day on paper, like do a schedule of their day and have a time every day or every other day where they're exercising and they make it an appointment. They have to get up at a certain time if they want to do it before work. They, have to, they can do it at lunch if their work has a facility like that. Uh, they can do it after work. Uh, if they don't work, then they have to have a specific time where they have a, um, their phone or their watch goes off, gives them an alarm to remind them to exercise. And if they can't stay on that schedule, then getting somebody else to work out with them is always helpful because if somebody calls you and says, well, I'm coming over and we're gonna, you know, let's do blank, you're not gonna go, oh, I'm too tired. But it's easy to skip it if it's just you. So uh, an appointment is good. Sometimes a, a trainer, if you have the ability to have a trainer is good because you have to go to an appointment. If you don't go, you pay anyway. So those are, those are little tricks to keep you going. 
but giving up doesn't work. <laughs> it really doesn't work. Then you have, you have more weight to lose later. And it's very frustrating and it's not healthy for your body to go between dieting and then overeating and dieting and overeating. It's just not good for your body. So we end up with a lot more diseases, a lot more problems. The last element of this is if you have, do not replace your testosterone, the, the one hormone that stimulates growth hormone, so it's really a twofer, replace your testosterone and then you will also get a higher growth hormone unless, unless you've had a head injury. Uh, so that's, my, that's one of the reasons it wouldn't work, but in general it works. That is going to help you make muscle. Muscle burns calories. The more muscle you have, the more calories you burn, uh, the, more insulin, the more insulin sensitive you are, so that's the opposite of insulin resistant, then that actually helps you burn calories in your muscles. Your muscles can be quiet. If you eat, if you have lots of muscle, but you just, you eat a lot of carbs, then your muscles are gonna be insensitive to any kind of, of uh, exercise, fat burning, they're not gonna help you out. But if you eat properly and have a low carb diet, then your muscles will burn calories. So you don't want them to be inert and not do anything for you besides move you around. You want them to work in terms of your metabolism, but also to make you stronger, help your bones be stronger. I mean, your muscles do many things for you. We've had other health casts about that. So testosterone, putting the right fuel in your tank and exercising on a regular basis are all necessary for you to get to ideal weight and controlling your schedule, knowing when you're gonna go see mom and take her her laundry or whatever she needs, knowing when you're, you know, which days you're going to take your kids to an activity after school. Let me just tell you after, I mean, I'm a, mo I'm a mom and a grandma of one child and I realized that was a lot easier than if you have multiple children. But sometimes you have to tell your children they can have one activity a semester because three activities isn't necessarily necessary for them to be healthy, productive adults in the future. They need some downtime and so do you. And spending your day at you know the baseball diamond or at the, um, in the gym all the time when you're not working, is, is, that's not healthy for you. You need to have time to yourself and running multiple kids around to multiple activities isn't ideal. So if there's a way you can work out at the same time, great. But um, be, getting sick and, and uh, being obese is not a good alternative. You know, so I think limiting your children's activities a little bit so that they have a reasonable amount of activities after school is actually healthy and it's healthy for you and for them, then they have a little time to just chill out. So that's my advice on being ideal weight, losing fat after you're 40. I hope you've uh, learned something and I hope this helps you in your quest to be looking great in your swimsuit. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.